Hello everyone. Today we'll take a closer look at a series that certainly holds great sentimental value for many gamers, the Pekakana series. But before we dive in, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. Let's get started. We travel back to the late 90s, when Deep Connection, later renamed Piste Games, began working on a game, primarily developed by Yane Kivilahti, that was likely intended to be a commercial release. Unfortunately, a hard drive failure resulted in the loss of the main game, leaving only the demo version. The full version was undoubtedly more wild than the demo, which already gives us interesting mechanics, like the ability to throw mechanical saws as a chicken amazing. The game's story is also quite unique. For unexplained reasons, Pekka, the rooster protagonist, decided to challenge the fundamental laws of nature by attempting to lead a community of animals. Despite achieving some triumphs in steering his brethren toward democratic ideals, he was placed in a psychiatric institution by a dominant faction of animals with differing beliefs. After a certain period in this medical facility, from which he was released as a cured individual, Pekka decides to seek revenge on his adversaries, a terrifying mix of animals and robots. However, there's a possibility that this entire daring adventure is merely a product of his distorted imagination, influenced by potent psychotropic drugs. In the early stages of his adventure, Pekka is completely unarmed, with limited health. The player's task is to help him acquire weapons and first aid kits while avoiding confrontations with enemies and gathering food. Although the beginning is particularly challenging, Pekka gradually gains new skills and equipment that facilitate his battle against foes. Pekka Kana is a classic platformer, graphically quite simple but with its own zany style. We traverse various levels with different characters, the sound effects are bearable, and that's about the best one can say about them. The game mechanics are similar to classics like Mario. We walk on platforms, collect items for points, and pick up weapons and first aid kits. As I mentioned earlier, until Pekka gets a weapon, he is defenseless and must watch out for traps and varied enemies. In the demo, our main weapon is a mechanical saw that we can throw at enemies. During the journey, we can also find a special turtle suit that our rooster can wear. This changes Pekka's properties. He moves more slowly and is shorter, but can jump using a spring located on the bottom of the shell and can also throw something resembling shells. Another time, he might acquire a gun and turn into a secret agent. Unfortunately, the hitboxes in this game are highly unintuitive, and it often takes a lot of effort to eliminate our opponents. The demo is relatively short, and it ends with us killing the boss, which is explicitly displayed post-battle. And so, we come to the more famous and well-received sequel, Pekka Kana 2, which aside from the main character shares little with its predecessor, and took about 20 months to develop, debuting in 2003. It was initially presented at a Finnish industry event called Assembly 03 Game Development Competition, where it took second place. Being a freeware title, it quickly started appearing as an add-on on CDs included with video game magazines. It was playable and had nice graphics, which, when combined with being free, created an exceptionally successful blend. Pekka is a rooster living on a remote farm in a land called Finland. His primary job is to watch over the chicken coop. One night all the hens disappeared. A sinister raven named the Evil One turned out to be their kidnapper. Now Pekka faces the challenge of rescuing the hens and returning to the coop. However, the mission won't be easy. The Evil One has a mind control machine, which he uses to control hypnotized creatures. Although they are also victims of the Evil One, under his influence, they become your enemies. The Evil One also dabbled in voodoo magic and genetic engineering to create a prototype weapon called Metal Hen. If he creates more of them, these machines could begin controlling minds worldwide. Pekka Kana 2 features two worlds with varying difficulty levels. Along the way, you might encounter mysterious bottles that transform Pekka into different animals. Graphically, the game looked very pleasant, especially for a free title. Everything seems much more cohesive than in the first installment. More accessible, Kana is no longer a maniac running around with a chainsaw seeking revenge. This part is much friendlier. Similarly, the music complements the whole game nicely. The gameplay has changed a bit. Now we have a maximum of three lives which we can regenerate by collecting feathers scattered around the board. The more lives we lose, the fewer feathers Pekka has. This time we don't annihilate enemies with a chainsaw or a gun, but with a horn that stuns them. There are various types of horns. 
Some even create small ice blocks, mm. allowing access to hard to reach places. Sadly, just like in the first installment, after dying, we have to replay the entire level, which is often frustrating. For example, when you trip and fall into a chasm or fire or unexpectedly die after hitting a moving platform. The game has seen a plethora of community created maps thanks to the later addition of a map editor. Later on, the game's creator released the game's source code, opening many opportunities for fans. For instance, there was a port created for Android, a version compatible with modern computers, a sprite editor, and much more. But let's rewind to 2007. That's when work on the sequel Pekakana 3 was announced. It was revealed that a team, rather than just one person, was working on the game. The release was scheduled for 2009 to coincide with the assembly event. Unfortunately, not everything went according to plan. By 2008, it was clear that the game wouldn't be released in 2009, or even 2010. The developers focused on creating game-related features, effects, physics, and a special advanced editor in which Pekka was to be designed. But not only Pekka, it was meant as a tool for the team to design titles. In 2009, players received screenshots from a very early version of the game. They were optimistic. The game was in development and promised to be bigger and better. Graphics had been significantly modernized, as had lighting, and the world map was entirely revamped. According to the developers, at that time the game was only 5% complete. In the meantime, a tech demo was developed which expanded unexpectedly, affecting the pace of work on Pekka Kana 3. Uh, in 2009, a free game developed in the aforementioned editor was released, titled QLAT 3, showcasing the editor's new capabilities. The developers sought ideas from the community on the official forum. Suggestions varied from new attacks to technical aspects. You can still read all about it on the forum, the link is in the description. In subsequent years, the original creator, Yanni Kivilati, began further studies, hence having even less time to develop the game. The engine underwent major modifications and previous scripts became incompatible, um, etc. As Yana Kivilati himself stated on the Peace Games Forum on April 15, 2015, PK3 hasn't been in the works for years now. I guess the main reason is that I just lost my motivation to do it. I don't make games because I want money, but just because I think it's fun and you can learn important skills while doing it. So what killed my motivation? too high expectations for the game for one. We, me and Jerome, tried to keep the game from getting too big so it would be possible to finish it, but eventually we got too ambitious anyway. That leads to lack of time. He also mentions that when he worked on Pekakana 2, there weren't as many good platform games. Over the years, fans discussed creating a fan-made version of Pekakana 3. But so far, no project has progressed to an advanced stage of production. And that would be all for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up under the video, and comment on how you remember the Pekka Kana series. Until next time. <laughs>